Today, we're learning some really cool shortcuts or factors. I'm sure you've all done this before, where you write out, let's say you have a giant number like 96, you write out 196, 248, 332. And if you've done this before, this might be the last time you need to do this, because we're about to learn some really cool tricks. The number of factors of a number with prime factorization of this form is, you just add one to all the exponents, and multiply that product. It's that simple. For example, if you have three, two cubed times three to the five times five to the seven, the number of factors of this number is just three plus one, four, times five plus one, six, times seven plus one, eight. That's it. That's a really nice, neat trick to find the number of factors of a number with its prime factorization. Let's say, let's look at this cool example from the AMC eight. How many positive integer factors of 2020 have more than three factors? Now, three is really small. Okay, so to do this, let's ignore this condition for now. How many positive factors does 2020 have? Well, what is the prime factorization of 2020? 2020 is four times five over five. Four is two squared. Five over five is five times 101. And 101 is prime. So this is a prime factorization. Okay, so how many factors does 2020 have? You just add one to all the exponents. So three times two times two equals 12. 12 factors total of 2020. But that's on our answer because to how many factors of 2020 have more than three factors? Okay, so one, how many factors does one have? Singular, one just has one factor. Now, I'm sure you all know primes have two factors, one and itself. But it says more than three factors. So what we're gonna try and do is, we've got 12 total factors. Now let's subtract off the factor, we've got 12 total factors. Now let's subtract off the factors that don't have more than three factors, so that they have one factor, two factors, or three factors. So the only number with one factor is one, right? The only numbers with two factors are primes. The only numbers with three factors are, what are they? Well, remember our number of factors trick? For a number to have three factors, it's prime factor, right? We just add one to find the number of factors of a number. You add one to all the exponents, multiply. But notice three. Three is prime, right? So the only way to multiply numbers to get to three is one times three or just three itself like that. And notice by our factor trick, what does this mean? Like one times three, well, let's say we have one times three. You know how we add one to all the exponents to get our product. Then that means our prime factorization would be of the form something like P, P1 to the zero and Q to the two squared, something like that, right? Because then we add one to get one, add one to get three, product is three. Or for something like three, it's just two Q squared because you just add one to two to get three. And notice that these are the same thing essentially because P to the zero is, is just one, of course. So you can ignore that. Essentially, we all numbers must be of the form Q squared where Q is some prime. So basically, all prime squares work. All prime squares have three factors. Interesting. So now, well, how many numbers? There's only one number that's one, of course. How many primes are factors of 2020? Just two, five, and 101. So that's three, right? And now, here's the part that is the hardest out of all three of them. How many factors of 2020 are prime squares? How many factors of 2020 are prime squares? Well, this isn't too bad either. Look, look at the prime factorization. Two squared times five times 101. The only factor that's the only prime that ha it even has a factor that's a square is two. So we have that there's just one factor over here that doesn't work and that's two squared itself, right? There can't be five squared, there can't be 101 squared because there's only one factor in the first place. So only one 
factor, that's a prime squared, and that's 4. So overall, we've got 5 factors that don't work, and 12 total factors. So out of that, 7 factors of 2020 have more than 3 factors. And that is our answer, 7. So let's break it down. The key ideas for this problem was to find the total number of factors using our factor trick. And then after that, we just did, remember complementary counting from the previous video? Complementary counting to subtract off the factors that, well, don't have more than three factors themselves. Okay, now we're on to sum of factors. If the prime factorization of a number can be expressed in this form, this is, this looks complicated, doesn't it? But don't worry. Let's say we have a number 2 to the 3 times 3 squared times 5. Find the sum of the factors of this number. Now, earlier, for, to find the number of factors, we just added 1 to all the exponents and multiplied them together, right? For sum of factors, it's a little bit different. So all you have to do is for each prime, let's say 2, we got 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed times 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared times 1 plus 5. If you understand, for basically 2 cubed, we just take 1, 2 to the 0 essentially, then 2, then 2 squared, then 2 cubed, then 3 to the 0 plus 3 to the 1 plus 3 squared, and then 5 to the 0, which is just 1, plus 5 to the 1. So essentially, you just start out at the prime to the power of 0, then go prime to the power of 1, all the way until this prime here, and then you multiply all these sums. Let's try another quick, easy example. 2 to the 4 times 3 times 7. So this is just 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed plus 2 to the 4 times 3 to the 0 plus 3 to the 1 times 7 to the 0 plus 7 to the 1. Interesting. So that's another really cool trick. And let's now learn another trick product of factors of a number. Let's say we've got a number, 2 to the 4 times 3 times 5. Remember this one, Bert? Okay, so what is the product of the factors of this number? Well, to do this, the first step is to find the number of factors. The number of factors, we just add 1 to all the exponents. So 5 times 2 times 2 is 20. So 20 factors, that's the number. And to find the product, all you have to do is take this number to the power of, so the product is just equal to the original number, which is 2 to the 4 times 3 times 5, to the power of the number of factors divided by 2. So in this case, that would be 10. And that's it. This is the product of the factors. Let's take another example. Let's say we want to find the product of factors of 36. And 36 is 2 squared times 3 squared. Now, 36 has 3 times 3 equals 9 factors, so the product of its factors is just 36 to the power of 9 by 2. Now, don't be scared here. This is just going to be equal to 36 to the half to the 9 power, right? Because we can use the exponent rule, and this is just 6 to the power of 9, and that's it. You can evaluate this if you want, but for the sake of time, Let's move on to an example that uses this property. Let A be the product of all the odd factors of 54. Let B be the sum of the even factors of 36. Find A minus B. Okay, first of all, what's 54's prime factorization? 54 equal to 2 times 27, which is 2 times 3 cubed. What about 36? Well, we just saw that. 36 is 6 squared, which is 2 squared times 3 squared. Okay, let A be the product of all odd factors of 54. All odd factors of 54. Okay, so what are the odd factors of 54? Well, notice how the odd factors of 54 are just going to be factors of 27 essentially, right? Because if it's not, if there are no factors of 2, if the factor is not divisible by 2, then it's essentially going to be 
just a factor of 27, right? And 27 is 3 cubed. So now essentially it's the same thing, find the product of all factors of 27. And to do this, we can use our trick. So 3 cubed has just 3 plus 1 equals 4 factors, right? We don't multiply by anything because there's just one thing in this case. So it's just going to be equal to 27 to the power of 4 by 2, which is 27 squared. And this is 729. You know this if you watched my square video I published. So 729 is 27 squared. Okay, 36. Now, let B be the sum. So this is the value of A. Let B be the sum of all even factors of 36. Find A minus B. So let's find B. 36 is 2 squared times 3 squared. We're looking for the sum of every even factor of 36. So the number must be a multiple of 2 and divide 36, right? Multiple of 2, but divide 36. Hmm. So all of the factors are just going to be even. You could brute force it, but we're trying to do something smart here, right? Multiple of 2 and divide 36. Okay, so consider this. It must divide 36. It must be a multiple of 2. What kind of factors does that really mean? What if we just say that it's equal to 2 times x, let's say, each factor, and it must divide 36. So if each factor can be expressed in the form 2x and it divides 36, then x divides 18. Okay, so 18. Huh, wait. So can we just find the sum of all the factors of 18? No. The reason we can't just find the sum of all factors of 18 is because for each factor x, the, for each factor x that divides 18, 2x divides 36. But we can do something close. Okay, so first let's let's take a sub question. Sum of all sum of factors of 18. Let's do this. Of 18. You'll see why in a second. What is the sum of all the factors of 18? We can use our property. 18 is 2 times 3 squared, so 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared, that's 3 times 13, that's 39. Cool. But that's the sum of all factors of 18. We're looking for all the even factors of 36. But notice how for every factor of 18, the even factor of 36 is just two times bigger. And just to be completely clear here, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this to make the explanation more clear. But I'll write all the factors out for now just to make the explanation more clear. This is definitely not necessary. Notice how each factor of 36 that's even is simply double the corresponding factor of 9, of, oh, sorry, of 18, right? Factor of 18, factor of 36, that's even. As you can see, each factor is double, right? And that makes sense because for it's a multiple of 2 when divided by 16. So you can say 2x divides 36, so x divides 18. Sum of all factors of 18, but then each factor is 2 times bigger, so we just do, just do 39 times 2 equals 78. So b equals 78. So a minus b is just 729 minus 78, and this is, you can do this manually if you like, or you can use a simple mental matric. This is 651, and that is going to be the answer for this problem right here. Okay, so let's just quickly review. Let's review everything that we've covered so far. Basically, first we said product of all odd factors of 54. That wasn't too hard. We just looked at 27 because it has to divide 27. So then we just use the product of factors formula right there, right? And then we were looking for the sum of even factors of 36. So how did we do that? We just simply looked at the factors of 18 and noticed that every even factor of 36 was just double the factor of 18. So we just get 729 minus 78 equals 651. So that's our answer and we are done.
And you can check these practice problems in the free Mastering AMCA book, link in the description. It includes many problems, many examples, and it supplements this video perfectly. Now we're going to explore something closely related to factors DCD LCM. And there's some unique properties of DCD and LCM that we will use to solve some interesting problems in the next video. You can click on it right there.